Hi, and welcome to Assure ID. In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through the basics of the Assure ID card personalization software. That includes the ability to design a card template and then printing that card template. So to begin, let's open up the application. Now with the application open, the first thing you'll be greeted with is a login screen. Now this is pulling my Windows username, but as a default, the username and password is simply admin, admin. Now you can change that in the user config screen later if you'd like. And then with that, you can select a module to open up within Assure ID as you log in. For this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and start with card design. Let me go ahead and open up the window so we can see a, the full aspect of Assure ID. So for us, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with card design. So to access card design, you'd come over to the application section, click on home, and underneath that, you'll have a couple different options. Card design, data entry, where you're actually going to be entering in the information for that record, and then reports. This is where you can see how many times a card has been printed or who's printing cards. So for card design, once you're in this window here, you'll notice that there's a toolbar up top with a variety of functionality and capabilities at your disposal. Uh, of course, there's a clipboard with simple cut, copy, and paste functions. There's a text area where you can add text labels, data fields, compound fields, and a variety of other options. And we'll kind of walk through some of these as we go through. Under the card setup, you can change the size of the card. The most typical card size out there is a CR80 card, but you can also use a CR79 or define uh, a custom card type, whether it's a dual-sided card. Uh, mirroring a card means that you're able to replicate the front of the card onto the back. So rather than having to duplicate what's on the front and redesigning that onto the back, you can simply design the front and then it'll show up on the back. Orientation, this is how the card is going to be orientated. So landscape would be with uh, the long side on the bottom, or portrait would be the long side uh, on, the, on the side, uh, right hand side that is. So that would be ideal if it's gonna be hanging around your neck. Now you can add mag stripe, uh, you can enable smart chips, which we won't cover in this tutorial. And in addition, you can also link to a variety of external data sources. For this tutorial, we're gonna kinda of stick with a, a simple basic card for you. There's also a view tab with a handful of options for you and a laser tab if you were using an HDP 8500 LE uh, that is from the Fargo card printer line of products. Um, but again, for this, we're gonna kinda of focus on more of a simple card design. So now let's start by designing our card. The first thing I would recommend doing is adding a background. So we'll go up, select background, add it to the front of the card. Here you'll be faced with a couple different options. You can select from one of the defaults, select a color, or load an image if you have one. That's probably the most likely scenario. However, for today, we're going to select a color. We'll just select a light blue. We'll go ahead and click OK. So now with the background in place, uh, the next thing I would recommend doing is adding in any company information. So if you're going to have the company name on the badge, you would add that by selecting text label and then selecting anywhere on the card and dragging it out. So now this is a static text label, meaning it's always gonna stay the same for every single card record. So we'll go ahead and put in HID Global for that. And so that's what's actually gonna be displaying on the card. And then within Assure ID, this text label will be named this. So this is kind of what it's labeled inside of Assure ID, text label underscore zero. So the next text label you add would be text label underscore one. You can then change the font by selecting any one of these that are located in there. You can also load fonts into Assure ID the same way you would load them for any other application on a Windows OS. You can change the font color with blue. You can also type in custom fonts if you have a specific color that your company is using. You can change the size. You know, do a variety of different font styles, alignment, placement, uh, borders, uh, things of that nature. So now we've got our company name. We'll go ahead and add a photo. Similar to the text label, select photo, and click anywhere on the card, drag to the size of the photo that you'd like to see. 
And then for the field name, similar to the text label that we had, uh, this would be the AssureID name for it. For this, I recommend changing it to whatever you, you're going to be using the photo for. So if it's an employee photo, you do EMP photo. You can select the format type of the photo that you're going to be capturing or using. We'll go ahead and just use a JPEG. And then you'll have a variety of different aspects that you can change for the photo. Now what I will say is if you do already have a collection of photos, you can use this function called use a folder data source. And what this will do is it'll allow you to actually grab the employee photos that are already existing from a folder. So you can select that, browse to the folder location, and then what you're going to do is a little bit of a mapping exercise of a, a field within a sure ID, such as employee number, and you're going to match that to the photo that's in the data folder. So for this, we're just going to load those photos at the time of data entry. Let's go out here and click OK. So now we've got our employee photo. Now we need to add in the name of the employee. You can do that by clicking data field. So data field means this is a variable field or variable text item. So this means something that's either going to be changing with each record or being inputted for each record. So we'll drag that, insert this here. So for this field name, we can leave it as data field five, but I recommend changing it to something more friendly. So for this, I would put first name. Then again, you'll be able to change a variety of the different font treatments and alignment if needed. So go ahead and click OK. So now we've got first name. What another data field for last name. And for this, we'll also change the field name to be last name so it's a little more friendly so I know what the field is. All right, so now I've got first and last name. The next thing I'll do is add a simple barcode. So for this, I'd click barcode. Again, similar concept, drag and drop for the size of the barcode that you'd like to select on there. For this, you maybe want to change this from barcode zero to barcode ID. So for the employee ID number, you could select a different font type uh, text string defaults. There's also a, a variety of different barcode options listed within there. Uh, on the barcode types, there are a variety that are already included. Uh, 1D and 2D barcodes, such as QR code, data strip, and a PDF 417. Now, for the barcode, you're going to need to enter in a data field or link it to a data field. Now, since we don't already have an ID number data field existing, I'm going to go ahead and create a new data field for that. And so for this, I'll write employee number. And then I'm going to change the field type from text to numeric. So then I'll come down and I'll select that field that I just created, employee number, I'll add that. So now that's what's going to be printed in the barcode. So I'll click OK. And we get a sample of what that barcode looks like. Now, before moving on from these elements, I do want to show you that on the right hand side we have card properties. This is a flyout panel that comes out when you hover over it. If you want to pin it so it always stays there, you click the little pin button. And now this will always stay on the side so you can see the different data fields that are over there. Nice thing about this is as you click on the elements, it'll highlight over on the left hand screen. So I'm touching last name, last name now hovers over here. And if for any reason you wanted to move a non printable field, such as the employee number to a printable field, simply click on it, drag it into printable, and then it'll show up on the card. So for this employee number, I'll move this back to non printable. However, I'm going to also show you how to create a compound field. And so for that, I'll add this onto the card. And this would be where if you want to have multiple fields lined up next to each other, 
this is how you could enter this in. The most common example that we see is putting a first name and a last name next to each other. So rather than calling this compound field underscore zero, I'm gonna type in full name. And rather than creating a new data field, I'm gonna use existing data field. So what I'm gonna do is select first name, and it's more or less cloning this, placing it into my compound data field. I'm gonna put a space, and I'm gonna insert another existing data field, and I'm gonna select last name. So now what I have here is one field that contains both the first name and the last name. And the reason why this is beneficial is if you wanna have the last name show up one space after the first name, by just placing two separate data fields, it's gonna be impossible to get that space to show up right every single time. And the reason for that is not everybody's first name has the same amount of characters. So this is one way to get around that if you would like to have the first and last name show up right next to each other. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So now we've got our full name there. And because I would rather use that than the first and last name on separate fields, I'm gonna take the first name, and drag that to non-printable, take the last name, drag that also to non-printable, and I'll drag the full name back up here. And I'd like to show you how you can add lists to the card template. So with that, I'm going to add another data field. Put this right here. Drag that up later. But let's call this department. And from here, I'm going to select advanced data field options. So it's going to give me more options outside of the regular ones that are there. So if I come down to pick list, I'm going to select use a pick list. And what this is going to do is it's going to force the individual when they're in data entry to select from a set of default or previously identified values. So we'll go in and hit manage the pick list. We'll add an item. Type in marketing. We'll click OK. We can add another item. Engineering. Click OK. We'll add a third one for sales and click OK. So now in this pick list, we have marketing, engineering, or sales. Click OK. OK again. And click one last OK, and we're good. So now we've got full name, so it'll be first and last name. We've got the department that they're in. We've got a barcode for the ID number. We've got an employee photo. I think I'd like to add one more item to kind of show you the, the capability here and that is around conditional fields. And so with that, I wanna have maybe a, a rectangle show up on the card. And we'll have it be bright red for the fill and transparent for a border. So now we've got a red box. Now I can see in a high secure area, if you have somebody that you know, is only admitted into or allowed into his particular area and you want it to be easy for the security guard to understand that, okay, that person has the appropriate clearance. So you wanna see a big red mark on their card. So if you don't see a red mark, you're not gonna allow them access into the high secure area. So with that, we wanna put the red mark on, but we only want it to be there for particular individuals. So what I'll do is I'll open up that field again by double clicking it. That's kind of a, a quick way to get in there. And rather than just leaving it as a full-time shape on the card, I'm gonna go ahead and hit conditional. So what that means is I can identify when that field is gonna be displayed. So I'll do display when, and the field is equal to the department equals, and I'll say engineering. So engineering gets access to the specific area. So go ahead and click OK, and as we get into data entry, you'll be able to kind of see how that works. In Allied, there's one last item I would like to show, and that is how to add an image. So this would be a static image, since it's a, a company logo or things of that nature. So you click Image here, drag that to where you want the image to appear. From here, you can then load from a file, and we'll select the HID logo, we'll click OK. So now we've got our HID logo on there as well. Maybe I'll move this to the top and move the employee photo down. Okay. 
that's how you can create a fairly simple looking card that has elements of barcodes, conditional fields, compound data fields, employee photos, static text. So there's a, a lot kind of going on in a, a relatively short amount of time as we design this card. Now there are other options to add signature or fingerprints, but for this example, we're gonna kind of stick to this basic setup. So the next step is to save the card template. So save that under a useful name that we'll remember. Click OK. And now you've got your card template designed. Next step is you want to add records to that card template. So with the card template designed, you'll then click Data Entry. And as the software mentions, there's no records. So the next step is going to be to add additional records. So we'll add a record. You can see on the, the right hand side, a little preview of the card template. So for this, we don't have any images yet loaded. So you can uh, click up top here to capture from a, a webcam or you can load from file. For this example, we'll go ahead and load from file. We'll go ahead and select Becky Gustafson. And this will open up a crop and edit window where you can move around the crop field. And for this, it's going to maintain the aspect ratio that's on the card, and that's gonna be checked by default. And if you're capturing a lot of photos and you have a webcam set up, I'd recommend selecting the set crop size as default because what that'll happen is the next time you take another picture, the location of the crop window and size will remain the same. And oftentimes if you're taking a picture of somebody sitting down or with the blue screen behind them, they're oftentimes in the same spot so that way you don't have to keep moving the crop size and the location each time. Okay. So now that we've got the photo, the next item is to enter in the first name. So we'll put Becky, I can hit tab to go down. Put her last name in, I can enter in her employee number. And then select her department. And again, if you recall, we created a pick list. So now once I click on department, I can select between marketing, engineering, or sales. So I'll go ahead and select marketing and I'll save that record. Control save would be your quick way of saving it. You'll notice that after I saved, we get a preview of that image. If you'd like, you can double click on the preview and it'll open up a bigger image so you can see what that card will look like. So we'll go ahead and close that out. We'll add one more record. We'll show you what happens when we select engineering as the department. We'll load from file, select Daniel Lee, OK, enter in his details. And then I'll indicate that he's on the engineering team. We'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll get a preview of that card. I can double click that to open that up larger. And you'll notice that because he's on the engineering side, now we have that big red security identifier on the card. In the bottom, I can swap back to Becky and you'll notice that the red mark goes away. The next step would be to print the card. So you can click File, Print, print the card, you can select all the cards or select that one. At this point, it'll open up a dialog to select the card printer and you can change any of the printer preferences there at that time. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Again, this was a fairly basic card design using a local database that comes with Assure ID. We didn't need to link out to a network database. You can do that. You can also import in from Microsoft Excel. If you'd like to get more information on how to do that, I recommend going to the HID Academy, which you can find on hidglobal.com, or going to the HID Academy YouTube site at youtube.com.